Even in death, the captain shouts his orders. And the crew obeys. Greetings, ladies and ladies, and welcome back to the realms of a cursed city. Having painted the mighty Watch Captain Hygrim in the last episode, we're going to paint the fearless soldiers of the Ulfenwatch today. Fearless not because they are brave, but more because they don't have a mind left to feel fear with. These skeletons are one of Raduka's main assets to keep the citizens of Ulfenkarn at bay, patrolling the night and showing no mercy to anyone they encounter. You might notice that most skeletons have a glossy finish, whether the sergeant and the standard bearer are matte. Well, when I primed them during the preload of this series, I ran out of spray primer mid-session, so I had to use my bootleg version of Imperial Primer instead. It works just fine for our purposes, and the glossy finish has absolutely no effect on the end result. Okay, all that out of the way, let's get going. Just as with Halgrim, we're gonna start on their armor. As I want to keep them quite dark, we should probably go with a non-metallic metal approach and use a blue tinted dark grey. At this stage, there's really nothing to look out for, so we can be quick and messy. The main thing is that we get all of the plate painted quickly. The good thing about batch painting a unit is that when you come to the last mini, the first one will most likely be dry again, so we can keep going seamlessly. After the armor, we take a Bordeaux red and paint their frayed surcoats. For me personally, this was great fun for the most part and a really satisfying activity, but what I really underestimated was painting the inside of the cloth. That was quite the difficult task, twisting our brush around all of the other bits to reach for the cloth behind the skeleton's backs. Take your time when doing this and make sure that everything's got some red paint on it. Also, don't forget to paint the flag of the standard bearer as well. Alright! Now we're going to take a dark khaki to paint the visible bones of each and every skeleton. We cover arms, legs, the bare skulls, especially the ones without a helmet, and also the visible ribs showing through the damaged breastplates. We've only put down three colors so far, but the minis are already coming together quite nicely, I think. Okay, now it's our true metallic metal's time to shine. We take a dark silver and pick out the tips of every spear, as well as the blades of every saber. After that, we switch it out for a bronze color to paint the massive shields they're carrying, with apparently no real effort, which, for me, is the most terrifying thing of all. And of course, their bits of scale mail, protecting their neck and other very important bits. For the leather straps, no, it's not what you think, we take a rich brown for the base coat. Make sure you catch all of them, as some can be quite easily missed. Keeping it interesting, we use a pale brown for the standard Beerus sheath, which we can also use to paint the wooden grips of the shields. To stay coherent with Hygrim and to not overload these minis with brown colors, I think we should spice it up a bit by painting the shaft of all their spears in a mustard yellow color. I know it looks very bright now, but no worries, the wash will knock it down later on. Now we just gotta paint up the end of the flag in a light blue, or really any other color that you'd like to be there, and we are done with the base colors. Every part of every mini is now fully painted, and I think they look great for sure, but still a bit flat. So, it's time to get their shadows in with a heavy black wash. Oh, how I love doing this. Washes are truly speed painting in a bottle. Just load up the brush with it and fully cover the mini. Washes, especially heavy washes like this one, often take quite a bit of time to dry. To keep ourselves busy, we can turn our attention to the bases, laying the foundation with Citadel's texture paint still and mud. After that we give it two coats of light beige dry brushes, 
paint the cobblestones in a dark grey, and we are done! Once everything is dry, we are left with some quite nice looking Ulfen Watchers. And I think we could definitely call the speed paint done at this point, yet I really encourage you to go one more step. Take out all of the paints we used for the base coat, and give everything a quick touch of highlight. We don't want to just paint the whole thing again, but rather only the areas that get a lot of direct light. If you feel like using the base colors again would be too subtle for all the extra effort, just mix a few drops of white into them. I for example used a light khaki when picking out the bones again, so we could definitely do it with other parts too. The only thing I'd recommend is to not get too bright with it just now. The only things that don't get a layered highlight are the bare skulls and the weapons of the undead. The last thing we gotta do is to paint the trims in a smooth pitch black, and we are done with the speed paint. Before we get to the results though, I took one of the unfinished Ulfen Watchers and went through all of the previous steps again while having a timer running. While you're watching me literally speed painting this mini, I'd like to use this opportunity for a small announcement. I have noticed that my last Curse City speed paints haven't been as successful as the previous ones, despite featuring fairly interesting characters like Watch Captain Halgrim, the Voxgar, and so on. Now, I don't know the exact reasons, but I'm guessing that, for starters, we have summer now and people are not watching YouTube as frequently anymore, but I think it's more that this box set is out for quite some time already, and there are tons of videos out there with the hype steadily decreasing. Now, of course, both of these reasons are absolutely understandable, and honestly, a part of me is really happy to say that 200 views in 5 days is unusually unsuccessful. But still, I, of course, want to grow my channel, and keep you all entertained to the best of my abilities, which is why I have to take actions accordingly. Now, what does that mean? Well, to calm any worries, I will keep going with this series and will also finish it. Before this summer's over, every miniature of the Curse City box set will have its speed painting done. But I will start sprinkling in other projects, and most importantly, start on another series quite soon. The most important thing for you guys to know is that I'm also having a livestream this August, and during this livestream I'd really like to have your opinion on to what to do next. I have a lot planned, and would like to know what you guys would enjoy the most. So, if you'd like to participate in deciding the course of this channel in the near future, try to come along in August, and please feel free to tell me in the comments as to what time the stream should start. Speaking about time, after an hour of hands-on painting time, a single Ulfen Watcher is completely done and ready for battle. Of these roughly 60 minutes, I spent 40 on the main speed paint, and another 20 minutes on the optional highlighting, if you've got a little more time to spend. And here's the result. The full Ulfen Watch is painted up to a dark, game-ready standard. Even though I painted all of them in one go, you might want to keep your sanity, which is why I really recommend painting them in batches of 5. I'm really happy with how they look so far, and I think they look great after a small amount of time, even though some parts can definitely be a lot trickier than I first thought. As always in this series, I will now use the next few minutes to show you guys a few slightly more advanced steps to upgrade these already awesome looking minis. Just as in the beginning of the speed paint, we start with the armor plate, giving it some light blue edge highlights. As the name suggests, we only really want to use the paint to pick up the raised edges, like the center of their harness, the edges of their sabatons and pauldrons, and also some points of the corroded holes and dents which get caught by the light from above. This step is definitely quite fiddly, but don't worry, we're not gonna do it again. Anyways, we're gonna repeat the whole process all over again, using an even lighter blue this time. In contrast to before, we're gonna apply it even more sparingly, catching only the very most raised edges and points with the most light reflecting from. This gives the armor a lot more detail, and because you're only hitting a few spots this time, it's actually done rather quickly. Okay, having the armor done, we can move on to the red surcoats, giving them a very similar treatment as the armor. 
Take a bright, vibrant red and apply it on all the folds and areas with the best incidence of light. Don't worry about the inside of the cloth and also leave plenty of the original dark red showing. As we can see here, this simple step is great for giving ropes and cloth in general some more definition, especially on ropes with many folds like these ones. The next step is to pick out the bones with a very pale beige paint. Again, only catching the prominent parts and well-lit details. After all this is done, it's time for some easy weathering. To mimic the effect of rust on these undead's weapons, start off by dabbing some dark brown spots randomly on the blades. After that we'll follow it up with two paler, equally random brown coats and sprinkle some bright orange onto it to finish it up. I can't emphasize enough just how easy and effective this technique is, and if you want your skeletons to have rusty weapons, you should definitely give it a try. Coming really close to the finishing line, we'll take a bright silver and highlight the edges of the bronze scale mail. Not every edge, just a few here and there will totally sell the effect. I recommend using the light on your workspace's reference to see which scales reflect the most, and then paint only those spots. Okay, the last thing I want to do is to paint the blazon of Ulfenkarn onto the banner of the standard bearer. The picture from Games Workshop though is very small to really get a clear view. Luckily, the map segments of the game sometimes feature the whole symbol in all its glory, so we have a clear reference to work with. I say reference because I didn't like the original blazon that much to be honest, as the arrow and the wheat ear didn't make much sense to me. None of the Ulfen Watchers wield bow and arrow, and there are not really that much farmers left to provide the now mostly undead inhabitants of the city. So I switched them out for Spears of the Watch instead. Unfortunately the painting process is very finicky and my posture is very unhealthy. So I'm very sorry to say that there's absolutely no way I could get this step on camera properly. The Ulfen Watch is now fully painted up and ready to act at Radokar's command. Scouring the city of futile rebellions and keeping all what's left of the city's living populace at bay. I think we did a great job with these skeletons, keeping their armor nice and dark while simultaneously having lots of bright vibrant red and even some shiny true metallic metal action going on. If you're following me along in this series with your own miniatures at home, you will now have 49 of the 60 cursed city miniatures finished by now. And as always, I'll have a guide listing all of the exact paints that I use in this video down in the description. If you have any questions, maybe a couple of suggestions, please be my guest and share them in the comment section. These spooky scary skeletons might be enough to keep the frightened peasants in order, but for any real threats Raduka has to pull out the big guns. His Korsagi Nightguard. In the next video of our speed painting series, we're going to take care of these undead giants and if you would like to see their paint job, as well as the other upcoming Curse City miniatures, feel free to hit the subscribe button. As I am very looking forward to seeing you again in my next video. Until then, take care.